Hello there YouTube, this is Bad Company Sarge, and today is the very first episode of Sarge's Specials. Seeing as this is the first episode, I should probably explain what Sarge's Specials actually is. It's going to be a show that I'll be doing semi-regularly, where I buy a game off of Steam that has been put on sale, but was already a fairly cheap game, not one of your AAA 60 quid ones or anything crazy like that. Nice kind of inexpensive stuff that's been reduced down to an even cheaper price. I'll then kind of play for a bit of a game, give it a little bit of a review process and just my initial thoughts and so on. It's not going to be a fully fledged review or anything, I won't play through the entire game. It's very much first thoughts and how I feel the game's going to be, and whether or not I felt it was worth the price that I paid for it. In addition, at the end, I'll give a summary of the game in general. I'll say whether I thought it was worth the price that I paid for it, and whether or not I believe that it's worth paying the full price for it. As you can see, today we are playing Skyshine's Bedlam Redux. I have already played a bit of this game, I actually did a recording beforehand, which I played through the first kind of hour of the game, got a good feel of it, so I already know what I'm stepping into. Normally it will be my first ever kind of look at the game, but in this case I'd seen a bit before, I've ended up playing through what I did record, but I had some technical problems, so won't be using that recording, we're doing this one instead. For now, let's just jump straight into the game and show you guys what it's like. Alright, so here we get our little select our crew thingy. And, oh, I didn't actually do this last time. Alright, so you can go humans, there's marauders, mutants, cyborgs, and rogue AI. At the start of the game, you only get to go with humans. I didn't unlock them, unlock anything else, so I assume that it's kind of as and when you complete the game, or as and when you unlock a certain amount, you get to use the other factions who have different abilities, stuff like that. But as you're travelling through the wastes, you will find that there'll be mutants, cyborgs, so on and so forth, who can potentially join your team, which is quite nice to have. We're going to be playing on normal mode. It will be fairly easy at first, I find, but it will eventually ramp up in difficulty. Centuries from now. Okay, so we just had our little introduction video go on, and basically we're in a post-apocalyptic world, there's cyborgs, there's mutants, there's lots of gribblies out there. We need to go around, and we'll get our objectives in just a minute, telling us the specifics of what we need to do. So, what are my objectives? So we need to collect four ancient relics throughout the lands in order to gain access to the distant Aztec city. Each of these is accompanied by a sort of boss battle to unlock them. Safely deliver as many passengers as possible to Aztec City. We will potentially gain more passengers along the way, but I'm guessing we can lose quite a few. And stop King Viscera's reign over Bedlam. No idea how to obtain that objective, but I guess we just kill everyone. Right at the start of the game, we'll get three different places we could go. Whenever you go to a place, it tells you how many days it will take, how much oil you'll spend, and how much food it will spend. And straight away, you can actually upgrade your dozer, which is kind of your post-apocalyptic travel tank, I suppose it's called. And I highly recommend upgrading both fire research and engineering straight away to make everything nice and cheap for you. So now it saves us eight oil and eight food on our traveling. In addition, the more days we spend traveling, the higher the threat level goes. It's really not much of a challenge at first because you just kind of wander about you know, all the threat levels low, but once the threat level gets higher, obviously the battles get harder, you're more likely to lose crew members, and something I do really like about this game is that once a crew member dies, they are dead. So as you can see there, we lost some of our food and our oil, and now every time we travel we get a little kind of screen telling us what's going on. We've only got one location we can go, so let's head there and see what happens. So the dozer is travelling down a steep decline when a herd of wild rancolo stampedes across its path. Unable to stop in time, the dozer plows into several of the heavy beasts, killing them instantly. That's a bit brutal of it. It crawls to a halt as the remainder of the panicked creatures thunder off across the dunes and out of sight. Deciding that it would be a shame to let this meat go to waste, you gather the carcasses and deliver them to the Dozer Gallery for... Dozer Galley, even, for processing. Alright, so you'll bump into lots of random encounters. These can potentially gain you some stuff like I just did there. 
just gained a bunch of meat from that. Now we have more places we can travel to, or we have a few side missions. Side missions cost far less time and resources to go to, but it's a bit random on what happens and you stay in the same location, so you don't make progress towards anywhere. However, I'm going to do a couple of them straight away, just to try and get a few bonuses here and there. Okay, so we've encountered a fight, so there's several nomads fending off some weird bug things, I think. So we're going to intervene and try and help them out. So we don't even get a fight for this bit because it's such an easy one. So we prove absolutely no match for them, we slaughter the little bugs, and the leader approaches. So these guys are very happy, so we can now invite them on. And we got ourselves some extra passengers, which I assume is helpful. I'm not entirely sure if it is. Ah, extra passengers does mean we consume food faster, which is a bit of a disadvantage, so you might not always want to get passengers to join on. However, one of our objectives was to get as many passengers to safety as possible. So, swings and roundabouts. Okay, so we've just come across the ruins of a battle site. So there's a sole survivor left who is a female remote marauder holding a large shotgun. I think it's worth approaching her and seeing if she'll join us. And because we're not cyborgs, there's no fight going on here. I'm guessing if you were playing as a cyborg, then she would have attacked you then. So there's definitely some different things that will happen if you pick a different starting race, which is quite interesting. So, Tazzy Flack, you're going to be one of our crew now. I'm pretty sure as soon as you invite them they always join. That's what i found so far anyway. Okay, so we've come across some kind of shop here. So we can trade some of our oil for meat. That's not really good for us at the moment. We've got far more meat than oil. We could trade passengers for meat. Okay, so passengers can be used as currency. This is very tempting for me to do. But... No, I'm going to be a good guy for once. Let's just leave it how it is. We don't need to start chopping up our passengers or anything for meat. And look here, we've got a nice oil supply we can go to. Oh, we get a little nice bit of artwork here. I quite like this. It's The artwork in this game isn't like anything really advanced, anything spectacular, but it all just looks quite nice. It's almost like you're reading a book with some illustrations, just to add to the story a bit. A recent seismic event has created a large crevasse in the unstable terrain. The rift is so deep that it struck a pocket of raw crude, which has partially filled the gap in the brittle earth. So, from that we get a bunch of crude oil, which boosts us up quite nicely. Um, I really want to fight that elite, but I'm not sure quite how to get to him. Let's head over this way. We are running quite low on stuff. So we find a recent battle, and as the crew approaches, the bodies suddenly leap from the ground and attack! So, we are now onto our first battle. Now, as you can see, we've got a ton of crew members all along this bit here. And they're all kind of a bit... They've got, like, health stats, damage stats, move range, and attack range. Which is very helpful for just knowing what each of them can do. In addition, all of these guys are rookies. they will say down there, rookie, how many kills, how many battles, stuff like that. We also have an elite, who's a very powerful one. You get rookies, veterans, and elites. Really, you'll normally want a bit of a mix of all of these. So, I'm just going to leave things as they are for now. Because we haven't encountered any other crewmen who are going to be much more helpful. However, we do have one veteran here. Who I think would be quite good to replace. Because, yeah, we've currently got two snipers, which I don't want. But we could do with a frontliner. There we go. We've got a mix of all our crew. Okay, so we get to kind of overview the battle. Quite often you'll be facing just a couple of enemies. I think they're... I think these are both mutants. I assume they're both mutants anyway. Okay, so you can see by hovering over them where they can move to, how far they can shoot, so on and so forth. So that guy's very short range. That guy on the other hand has a fairly long range. But I've got nothing really to worry about because for the first turn or so, I won't be going too far. Now this girl here is quite large, so she takes up four spaces, whilst most people only take up the one space. I want to get my shotgun guy nice and far forward, 
I want my gunslinger also to be advancing at a decent pace. In addition, I want my close combat person who can take a ton of damage right up at the front. Obviously I don't want her too close so that square is the furthest I want to be going to. But helpfully, I'll be just out of range. Look at that, I'll be able to bash that guy over the head next turn. There we go, and it's going to do about 4 damage. So let's straight away just go smack. There we go. It's got it down to 3 health. And with this guy, I can move that there. I'm going to blast that guy to death. Nice. As you can see, this game's nice and simple as long as you just are happy to go duh 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 duh. And there's also line of sight, so hiding behind that barrel can actually grant me a bit of helpful defence. For now, just move over that way. And you, how far can you go? Right, if you go over there, I might be able to do this, yeah, without taking any damage if I'm lucky. Oh, it's not quite what I had in mind, but oh well. Let's move you over there. Alright, my cyborg, I'm just going to have flank around the back, and let's have you smack her in the face. Two damage. So she's going to live for one more turn. Oh crap. I just lost my best person. That wasn't very good. That was our first proper fight, and I just lost... She's... I've lost my elite. Oh dear. On the bright side, nobody else is wounded, but that did not go quite as planned. Alright, let's put that sniper in and panic a bit. You know what? I've just lost an elite, so I could do with getting another one. Let's encounter this elite event. Oh wow, actually says their names. So far all the audio has just been sound effects and music. I do quite like the music by the way, it reminds me a bit of the original Borderlands, gives me a bit of that feel to it, especially with the whole desert landscape as well. So King Viscera said you scuzzers would be a challenge. Crowbar Main is going to pound your puny banoobs with a man masher. <laughs> Time to make paste. So we got ourselves a little fight here. Um, this? I have no idea how badly this is going to go. Oh, okay. This is a very difficult fight. We've not only got the big bad boss to face, we've also got four of his little underlings who can just charge up and bash us in the head. So let's get our sniper deployed all the way over here to get a clear line of sight all along this flank. Let's send. Hmm. Yeah, let's send our own person up there, defending this guy. There we go. Uh, nope, you can stay there. And let's have a gunslinger go up here. There we go. I feel that's... Oh! Oh, crap. They appear to have grenades. This is very bad. This is very, very bad. I was not prepared for this. Oh crap, not only do they have grenades, but they move very fast. Oh, this is this is quite bad. Oh, they've got a ton of health as well. Um, yeah, I really wasn't prepared for this. Alright, let's move you there and take a shot at you. There we go, that deals a bit of damage. Let's try and take them on one at a time. Hopefully, I can deal just enough damage to kind of handle you people. Oh, um, yeah, I could really do with my sniper being way out of the way here. Uh, how far can you move? Move to there. All right. How far can you move? You can. Oh. Okay, so. I need to be up to that point, really, to escape that guy. Okay, so the Molotovs hurt themselves, which is good to see. But, yeah, 
he's taking a fair amount of damage. Oh, and the boss guy's heading up. And he's faster than I was hoping for. The bad guy seems to have no idea what he's doing, though, which is nice to see. Alright, um, I think first things first, let's deal with this guy. There we go. That's one of them out of the way. Now I need to handle the next guy. If I can take them just one at a time, it should make things a bit easier for me. Hmm. Now I can't actually shoot anyone with this guy unless I go straight for that one, but then I'll take a few points of damage. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to... I want at least one shot off with my sniper. Oh, rage. Rage is bad. Rage means extra damage. I just lost my veteran. Oh, this is going bad. Oh, crap. There's a Molotov as well. Okay, I need to move again. Um, look, where can I go? Where can I go? Where can I go? Okay, let's move you there. And then just shoot you. That was almost enough to kill it. You've got four health. Four health isn't too bad. Oop. Crap, there's two of them, aren't there? Uh, you deal about five points of damage. Alright, let's just shoot that guy. There we go. That guy's dead straight away. Let's... Oh, I can't kill you. Let's move you over there and then shoot the other guy. That means my trench will be able to deal with him. Providing he doesn't die, he's at one point. Oh, crap. My trench is dead. And, oh, that's bad. That's quite bad. Okay, let's move you back and then shoot that guy. That's that one dealt with at least. You can move back and shoot that one to do not quite enough damage to kill it. But it's... There we go. I get to counterattack with gunslingers though. It's quite handy. All right, I got two people left. I oh crap! I need to deal 14 points of damage. I really need to keep my distance. He's got he's got decent move range, but I should be able to stay just out of range of him for the most part. Fire! So both of them move far away and split up, but then try and deal as much damage as possible. Oh crap! Okay, so it's just my sniper now. Um, can he... He can't get me from there. Oh, but I can't quite shoot him. Oh crap. That was bad. Okay, everywhere I can shoot him from, he can hit me. Hmm. I don't think I'm gonna win this. Alright. I just hope I get lucky and I survive a shot. He's got rage, I'm dead. Oh, threat level has decreased at least. Okay, so we had, well, quite literally my first ever defeat. Oh, we lost it. Oh, if you lose a fight, you lose a bunch of passengers. That was... Oh, that was quite bad. Um, that was very bad. Crew require. Oh god, I'm down to five crew members. Oh, okay. Let's. Okay, I can recruit a new crew member. At something at least. There we go. I got myself a new dead eye. Let's get myself a frontliner, the one and only gunslinger, and oh god, my crew's so bad now. All right. Oh. And I failed that elite event. That's bad. Okay, this game is very brutal on if you lose. You really don't want to lose a fight. Mm, that hurts now. Okay, this is not going too well. Let's do the objective. I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose, but... Yeah, okay, so we're on to our next kind of boss fight. Um. So we have to fight his finest monsters to try and win this. This is going to go bad. Oh! Oh dear. He does additional damage. 
Um, yeah, let's smack in again. There we go. Four points of damage. We just need to do as much as we possibly can. We really could do with just killing him straight away. Okay, we'll have to move you there. You can get shots in at him. Then... Okay, you apparently can shoot. Excellent! I like dead eyes. Dead eyes are handy. Crap. I just lost two people. That is very bad. Okay. Um. I just lost half my crew to kill one guy. And I've got another guy wounded. Okay, sniper. You are my one hope. Let's just move there and shoot you in the head. You're gonna run up and vomit on me, aren't you? Yep. Oh dear. Um, okay, we get a choice to fight on or give up. I say fight on. What makes us think this time will be any different? Okay, I literally have two crew members left. We might as well just go all out and fight to the last man. Because I have lost the game at this point. Yep. Let's shotgun you in the face. Shotgun! Look at that. And we're very dead. Yep, that's all of our crew gone. Wait, fight on? Ah, here we go. Game over. Oh, okay, so we get a score, a rank, and so on and so forth. Mediocre mechanic. Don't mind too much. Okay, we get some little stats. That's, yeah, that's quite a nice little game over screen, all things considered. So I've played a little bit of this game now. I pretty much know what's going on. Admittedly, this time was very, very different from the first time. The first time I was breezing for every fight until I get to a boss fight, which I was using my rubbish crew for and they got slaughtered, as happened this game. I do really need to go on lots of side quests and side missions to kind of boost up your crew, potentially find more people, and just make your team overall a bit better. The resources, I don't feel you need to have to worry about quite as much as your actual crew. Overall, I definitely say I enjoyed the game. It was a lot of fun playing it, and I don't have too many thoughts on it. There are a few like random events which are either very similar or quite literally just the same that you'll encounter, and arguably it might not have a ton of replayability just because of that, but you do get a few different races, people's abilities are a bit different, there's a lot of tactical thinking to it, so it's pretty decent. As kind of an overall thing, I would definitely say it was worth the £1.49 that I spent on it. I'm going to play this game even more off camera. It'll likely be a game that I play every once in a while when I want a bit of a different experience to some of the normal games that I play, like Fallout and so on. However, at the full price of £14.99, you really have to look at this game and go, oh yes, that's a game I definitely want. Because it can be quite brutal, and it's a little bit repetitive, and it is just very much a tactical shooter with a bit of story thrown in. As you can hear throughout the entire thing, there's not much in terms of audio. There's... the effects during combat are quite nice, but there's nothing really taxing in it that's gonna grab you straight away. You might particularly like the art style, I know I personally enjoy it, but you really have to enjoy the gameplay and just the type of game it is more than anything to go for it. I'd recommend waiting till it's on sale if you're not 100% certain that you want to buy this game. It definitely is a lot of fun, and it will still be on sale for £1.49 until the 1st of November, so if you watch this video pretty much straight away, I get it for that price on Steam, which I would highly recommend. It's literally the price of a Big Mac. This is this game is so much better than a Big Mac, let's face it. However, if when you encounter it, it's still at its normal price, I'd probably skip over it and put it on your wish list or whatever, and if it goes on sale for something that you feel is a bit better, even if it's only for like 9 99 if it's a fiver off, I still reckon you might be able to get a good amount of gameplay out of it. But overall, I'd say it's definitely a good game, the difficulty is quite nice to have. I found on my first playthrough it was too easy and I was like, eh, I'm just going to wander around and kill everything, this is so easy. 
the second time this has been quite a bit more fun. It's definitely going to make me, when I play next time, think a bit more over the fights, actually do more of the side quests and really focus on inventory management and who's fighting when. Those were my thoughts on the game, I want to thank you very much for watching this video to the end. If you haven't seen already, I do a bunch of Fallout builds on the channel, Skyrim builds, I'm doing a Let's Play, there's various other stuff, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. In addition, buy the game if you liked it, if you didn't, don't worry about it. But thanks very much for watching, like if you enjoyed the video, and comment down below. Thank you very much, and goodbye.